In this video, I will attempt to explain exactly how the engine starting circuit on my 1999 Kawasaki 800 Vulcan Classic is designed, how it works, and some examples of what to do when there is a problem. While this video is based entirely on my bike, I'm sure much or all of it can be applied to many other motorcycles. This diagram shows the complete circuit with the exception of the lockout switches for neutral and the clutch handle. Just remember that both simply switch to ground at the appropriate times. The neutral switch is closed only when, the, when neutral has been selected and of course the clutch switch is designed to allow the engine to be started when any actual gear has been selected and the clutch is disengaged. Also shown are the wire color codes. In all subsequent diagrams the actual color codes will be changed to red when a wire is determined to be hot. This shows the state of the circuit when the system is at rest. Note that the white wire that connects from the solenoid to the ignition switch is always hot. All other circuits are powered by this wire when the ignition switch is placed in the on position. Here the ignition switch is placed in the on position. Current passes through the ignition switch and is routed into the junction box, then to the ignition 10 amp fuse as well as others, out of the uh, junction box and up to the kill switch where, because in this example the kill switch is open, the current flow stops. Closing the kill switch results in one small but important step in the process. Of course, the kill switch and the start button are both in the same housing on the right side handlebar. Closing the kill switch simply allows current to flow over to the input contact in the start button. Bingo! The circuit is completed when the start button is depressed. Well, maybe. This is what happens now. Current passes out of the start switch into the junction box where it passes through a diode to prevent any uh, reverse current flow, then to a relay. Here's where the neutral switch and or the clutch switch come into play. Unless one of two conditions are met, nothing actually happens. Condition one, the gear selector is in the neutral position or condition two, the clutch is in the disengaged position. If either condition is met, the yellow-green wire is switched from open to ground, allowing the relay coil to be energized, closing the contacts, which allows current to flow through the yellow-red wire over to the solenoid, where the solenoid coil is energized, causing current to flow through the solenoid to the starter. Now on to the problems I found in my starter circuit and how I resolved them. I purchased my bike several years ago with about 20k miles on it. I remember the day I rode it home from the seller's house that the solenoid shattered. Not bad and only briefly, but it always started. And since then, most of the time, there was that brief chatter before the starter fired up. A little irritating, but I guess I just learned to live with it. Then recently, I got, it got pro progressively worse until it refused to start altogether. Fortunately, that happened at home. So the first thing I did was connect a jumper from the battery to the connector for the yellow-red wire on the solenoid. Nothing. I was surprised since I've never seen a bad solenoid. Removing the solenoid and inspecting the terminals, I found that where the ground and positive male connectors were soldered to each end of the coil wire were some of the worst soldering jobs I've ever seen. Just a couple blobs of solder. I heated the blobs up and blew them out with compressed air. You can see how little the solder had adhered to the rightmost male terminal. I assume this was the original solenoid from the factory. What's more amazing is that it worked more or less for a quarter of a century. So I ordered a new solenoid. Here's an image of the soldering job on this new one. These kinds of projects often seem to have little surprises along the way, and this one was no exception. So when I got on Amazon, I found several solenoids that claimed to fit my bike. Most were eight bucks, one was 12. So I mindlessly ordered one of the $8 units, installed it, turned the key on and nothing. Long story short, I found that all of the $8 units were, some other, were, were for some other applications where the terminals were reversed for my application. The $12 unit had the terminals placed correctly. Now I'm going to have to go through the return, order, wait thing. Nuts. But wait, all I have to do is swap in the old top part to the new bottom part and I'm good to go. Plus, I saved four bucks. 
But if I thought all my problems were resolved, I was wrong. I still experienced a short duration of chatter when I hit the start button, but at least it was consistent and started every time. I theorized that there was too much resistance somewhere, resulting in enough initial voltage drop to cause the solenoid coil to lose enough magnetism and release. Not surprising, actually, after a quarter of a century. I found that while the starter is cranking, the circuit voltage can drop into the 6 to 7 volt range. Add to that any extra resistance, you, and you can see why the coil might not have enough voltage to stay in the fight. So I checked every wire, every connector, every switch, cleaned up everything I could, and bingo, chatter gone, case closed. I did find that the worst offender was the red multi-pin connector under the gas tank on the right side. Cleaning up the individual male-female terminal ends helped a lot. Also, both the kill switch and the start button can be easily disassembled and the contact points cleaned.